Good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a great Saturday morning. Today we have a very special guest, but let's get to the intro first. Good morning, everybody. Today we have a very special guest, Miss Sandra Gerhart. Hey. Hello. What's up? You have the best intro on the internet, hands Thank down. You. Very cool. Okay. Sandra's goal is to see a world of which people are able to confidently use their unique voice, follow their dreams, embrace and monetize their pre- their passions, and find a way to understand exactly what a toddler is trying to tell you. <laughs> that is the uh, that is Sandra's intro. Hey buddy. Hello. It's hard to understand what your kids are trying to tell you sometimes, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. So what do you want to talk about, bud? Um, I have a couple questions. Of course you do. So what do you mean when you say try to understand your toddler at the end of your intro? So what's funny is, and, and you might, sorry, remind me how old you are. Uh, I'm turning 11 in like a, three weeks. Three weeks? Awesome. So the reason I say that is because uh, until I became a parent, I didn't realize um, how hard it is sometimes to listen to your kids, right? Like, have you ever been trying to talk to your parents and you're like, no, that's not what I mean. Or you do something and you get in a little bit of trouble. I yeah. doubt you've ever been in trouble, right? No. But <laughs> but uh, communication with your parents can be really hard, huh? Um, yeah. Outside of just trying to communicate and have a voice of your own as a kid with the whole world, then you have your parents who, you know, sometimes we're short on patience. Um, I just recently, the other day, Gage came in and he had like, he just turned five and he thought his, the dog ate his French fries and he literally like fell to his knees and he's like, where the dog ate my French fries. And they were actually in the sink. So the dog didn't eat them. Um, and I was like, wow, Gage, you're having a huge, big reaction to this, right? But in that moment, that was like the most important thing to him. So trying to remember that sometimes our kids have big feelings, sometimes we have big feelings, and trying to realize, you know, where are we at, instead of just always reacting. Yeah, that is important. Okay, um, can you give us like a... Where are you uh, from? Where are you right now? How long you have been in business? Yeah, you bet. So I'm in, I'm based out of Roundup, Montana, which is a really small town here in southeast or south uh, central Montana. We have about 1,200 people in our town. Are you from a bigger town? Uh, We probably have 2,500. Oh, nice. So you've got that small town feel. Where you really can't get away with anything because everyone's always watching. <laughs> um, right now, I'm physically located in Billings, Montana, and you are the first podcast that I'm doing from my new office. So um, cool. I got an office because sometimes that five-year-old likes to interrupt me. I've had to let him go as my as my assistant. Um, so I'm in Billings today, and then tomorrow morning I fly out to Orlando. I'm going to be speaking at the Orlando NABIP. And then Tuesday I catch the red eye to Dallas, and I'll be speaking at the Dallas NABIP. 
and then I'll be attending um, the 8% conference with Cody Askins. You ever heard of him? No. <laughs> the other day, you know, Derek Melbourne, his guy. His yeah. I, yesterday, him and Cody were doing an interview um, in Rebecca Davis's group, and I was like, oh, it's Derek Melbourne and that guy that always travels around with him. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be doing that, and then I'll be home for uh, till August. Oh, Melissa's going to be there. Hi, Melissa Ham. We'll see you over there. All right. Um, so what are what is your business and what business are you in? Oh, perfect. So I run Sandra Gebhardt Marketing, named it myself. And I work with agents, um, mainly insurance agents, on how to build a personal brand, like what you're doing, right? Like you can't walk into a room without somebody being like, oh, it's Sawyer, right? Um, <laughs> so we... Uh, I work with agents on how to use the social media outlets, basically just like what you're doing to build relationships, to know people, um, to get your brand out and build what we call omnipresence, which is just kind of being everywhere all the time. Um, and as you can see, you're doing that on social media so that uh, you always, no matter whether you're out playing with your friends or you're working on something, people are still seeing your videos. They're seeing your content. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. So what it does is it helps them build a brand without having to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I like it. Thanks. Um, how long have you been doing it? So that's a funny question or not a funny question. That's an interesting question because I've taken a couple different routes. Um, I didn't have everything all figured out at 11 like you. So I, uh, <laughs> I got into insurance like everybody else except for you and Joe. I just accidentally got into it. Um, started my own agency. I was a PNC agent um, selling auto insurance and homeowners insurance. And uh, started my own agency right after my husband and I got married. And then that was uh gage is five so that was about eight or nine years ago um and when i was a sales agent i got into the digital marketing that's when i hired my first mentor and learned how to use the internet so i didn't have to make so many cold calls go to every single meeting that there was in the world um i didn't know anything about all the like medicare conferences and stuff back then um and my husband got sick he actually got a brain tumor um right behind his nose and we ended up selling our agency and going and kind of fighting that uh because we had to go down to arizona a lot and stuff and he's okay now we got it out um and then we had our son all at the same time it was all very dramatic um and after we got the brain tumor out i decided to hire some better mentors and go full-time in the digital marketing space so I've done everything from running ads to coaching to generating mortgage leads to generating PNC leads to health leads. And when COVID hit, I decided I would focus more on teaching agents how to get leads without having to spend all the money that you have to spend when you're running ads. So to answer your question 10 minutes ago, uh, about nine years. <laughs> how is your husband doing now? He's doing really good. We haven't had any reoccurrences or anything. So he's he's up and running and doing great. As far as brain tumors go, um, besides losing the business and uh, the financial end of things, it was it was pretty smooth all in all. So how did the brain tumor like interact with the businesses? Like with you working? That's an excellent you know, nobody has ever asked me that. That's an excellent question. Um we had to, so our business was still new. We were just six months into it. So we were still trying to kind of figure out how to run the business. Um, Darren had been working with me. And uh, what we found was that was before we had all this automation technology that we have now, like with the, with the go high levels and the different versions of that. So we were trying to use an old system that I just never really could figure out. It's really funny. I, uh, automation is something I've always kind of struggled with. 
So we were still doing things pretty old school, uh, all in all, when it comes to tracking calls and all of that stuff. So what we learned was if we weren't in the office, then most of the staff wasn't always working all the time. Um, And I was our lead salesperson. So that's a dangerous way to set up a business, right? Where you're making all the sales, um, but you're not very mobile. Uh, So when we had to go down to Arizona for a month at a time, things like that, to get uh, meet with brain surgeons and all of that, we were losing any momentum that we had in the business. So we decided to go ahead and sell it and focus full time on uh, fighting that brain tumor which resulted in us losing a bunch of money. But the one great thing about money is there's always another way to make more of it, right? Yeah. But you can't remake another brain. So yeah. we focused on that. <laughs> well, I'm glad he's okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. What is another question? I got a question for you. Okay. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Ah, see, that's going to be two questions now. Nate Offert would get on us about that, huh? <laughs> You're not supposed to ask a question before you ask a question. But uh, tell me about your dream fishing trip. Um, like, what would dream... be a cool fishing trip you would want to go on? Uh, probably taking you ocean fishing. Ocean fishing? Oh, and I'm going too? Yeah. All right, we're gonna have bait and everything. Yeah. <laughs> so Sawyer and I uh, met in person for the first time at SWAT, and we were desperately trying to go out and go fishing, huh? Yeah. And uh, we had the bright idea to go check the the uh, pantry that they have at the different hotels because they always have beef stew there, which for you city kids is a good fishing bait, right? If you don't have anything else, that beef stew works really good. And that hotel did not have it, but every hotel I've been at since has it. (laughs) It just always makes me chuckle. I always think of you. I'm like, well, we could go fishing here. Ocean fishing is one of the fishings I haven't done yet, but I'm going to have you guys up this winter to go ice fishing. It'll be fun. Dad's going out ocean fishing in like three days. He's going. Oh, that's right. He's going on a trip. He's going to Jamaica. Yeah. Lucky. I know. We're going to be expecting some big presents coming back from that. Uh huh. <laughs> so, what else you got for me? Um. Has anything embarrassing happened while you were on like an appointment or like hiring somebody? Um, I have a couple. Uh, embarrassing stories. Once when I was doing PNC, it was very rare in PNC that you go to somebody's house, but this was a really big account. Um, And one thing I've learned is anytime you try to chase the dollars and you go out of what you normally do, then you end up in a weird situation. And this lady had roosters and those roosters chased me all around her front yard. And that was back when I was like trying to be like businessy right so I had a blazer on and a pair of high heels and I'm running through this front yard trying to get away from these roosters chasing me oh it was it was a tough one yeah Joe knows (laughs) typically so the PNC agents in the room we're just we're just on the call we're just like do you want auto insurance or homeowners insurance or not and then you call the next guy but yeah those uh those chickens chasing me that are roosters chasing me that was and I hate roosters, dude. I just I just know. Like, when they see me, they know they're going to chase me. I know they're going to chase me. It was a tough one. It's like whenever people wear red uh, and bolsium. Mm-hmm. Yep. It feels like a Saturday morning cartoon, right? Like the dust was coming out from underneath my feet. And I was trying to get away. How about you? Have you had any embarrassing moments? Um, it was probably your dad embarrassing you, huh? <laughs> yeah. No, he says no. Mm. 
Yeah. It's All funny right. how it's funny how uh sometimes embarrassing things can be pretty funny and then sometimes they're like really embarrassing and you're like, I hope this goes away, right? <laughs> but when you live in a small town it never goes away. Um Okay. Joe just asked a question. What is your craziest door knock experience for your lawn company? Yeah, um, that one's for you. Probably. Um, I uh, Yeah, I remember him. His house smelled like Pringles. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's why you work on the outside of houses. <laughs> tell them about after you got that door knock and the guy went over the door. I have a better one. We'll tell them when <laughs> yeah, well, that guy, it was an older guy. Are uh-huh. you talking about the guy over by Gigi's house? Well, just in general, like, like, how did you deal with it? What did you do to move on to the next one? Like, that's a good teaching moment for some of these new agents. Maybe. I brushed it off my shoulders and went on to the next one. Yeah. Would you, uh, I've got a question for you. When you get your insurance license, I assume, are you getting an insurance license or do we all just assume that? I'm most likely going to get one. Most likely going to get one. Um, do you think that you'll do door knocking? Are you going to go meet at people's houses? Uh, I don't think that's going to be anything called door knocking. (laughs) You're not going to door knock. You're going to be like, I've retired from door knocking. I I don't think that door knocking is going to be an option. Yeah. If years. it was, would you want to do it? Do you like going and sitting in people's houses that you don't know? No. Well, that's probably good because you're 11. You probably shouldn't do that anyway, but <laughs> me either. You know, you got people like uh, Matthew Murray and some of those guys that they are uh, Joshua Young, right? They love going to people's houses. And I'm like, nah, dog. Nah, I don't want to. I don't want to go to your house. <laughs> you're scared of the roosters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're funny. I like you. Um. Okay, back to the question from Joe. I think, well, one of the times I was getting one of the neighbors down the street, uh, down the other cul-de-sac, and um, I offered it, and he was like, I said, um, I can also wash your car, and he was like, nope, I already have people doing that. Shut the door. Shut the door. Yep. That's probably the worst one. (laughs) I guess that one wasn't really embarrassing, but... It can be defeating, right? Yeah. Well, I just posted your craziest door knock experience. Mm -hmm. That can be really defeating when you're, like, you get up the nerve to knock on the door, you're going to present your business, and then somebody's like, nah, and shuts the door on you, and you're kind of yeah. like. When did you start your first business? Uh, Probably two, three years ago. Was it lawn care, or was it something different? It was lawn care and car wash. Nice. I like that you do both. That's really, that's really smart. It's like, the, it's Sawyer's, uh, it's Sawyer's uh, lawn Lawn, lawn mowing and car wash. Nice. We got to get you some merch out there. We have hats. Do we? All right. Yeah. I need to buy one. We all have to have, have your dad put the link in here so we all can get a hat. Well, I guess we don't have them made. We just got me and him, too. Yeah, that's all right. Tell your dad, Alex, we need merch. We want shirts, too. Well, there. I, I feel now like we got a we, merch department. first we needed to get the merch for the Jackson Agency. Yeah, and Saturday morning cartoons. We all want to wear your merch. Yeah, I like it. Saturday morning cartoon. Okay. Uh, I love. It. I'll start making that tonight. Yeah, I want a coffee um, mug. Um, although I don't really do Saturday mornings unless I'm at a conference. See, that's the cool thing about owning your own business is I you you hear a lot of people right there like you got to be part of the five a.m. club and. You got to do this and you got to do that. And I'm like, no, I don't. I like <laughs> to work late and I like to sleep in. 
Um, <laughs> so. I mean, unless you we- live in some weird time zone where you live across the United States and other people are getting up at 10 and you're getting up at 5. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Live I'll in have to Central. change it next year when Gage goes to school because then we'll have to be up in time for school. But uh, that's I love working on the great thing about working on your computer late at night. It's the same as working on your computer at five in the morning. Like everybody's asleep, so nobody's bugging you. So I can get stuff done. Anyway, I'm going to talk about my first business. You want to hear about it? Sure, dude. I got in so much trouble. Um, the Indianapolis 500, the car race was going on, and I was like six, and we lived in California. So I was the cutest little six year old you've ever seen. And I was like, it's really hot outside. And I just learned how to make paper fans where you fold a piece of paper and then you can fan yourself with it. So I was like, oh, I'm going to go door to door and sell these fans. So I take off in this big city and it was a uh, Bakersfield, California. So I take off selling these fans door to door. And eventually I, my mom shows up and she's all panicked and yelling at me. And I was like, look at all the money I made. I made like $15. <laughs> and, uh, that was, that was my first business. It was closed down the same day um, <laughs> due to parental constraints. But luckily I didn't get, <laughs> didn't get taken. Um, but that was my did, first foray into business. Did you get to buy 87 packs of bubble gum? I should have. I probably, I know they, I remember they let me keep the money. Um, they were just like, you can't start businesses and leave the house. I go to door. So <laughs> apparently there's an age limit on door to door knocking in big cities. <laughs> Unless you have a parent with you. Yep. So do any of your friends know that you have a show? Do you talk about this stuff with your group? Your people? Um, sometimes. Yeah. Do they think you're a little bit crazy? Uh, some of them keep it, uh, think it's cool. Yeah, that's all. Because it is cool. Like, you're the only one that's uh, probably doing this in your age group, huh? Do any of your other friends own a business? No. You're the entrepreneur of the group? Allison. Allison has her bracelet. Well, yeah. Just one. One of them. Yeah. That's so cool. I love it. Yes. What's interesting about most kids is they want to be uh, YouTube stars or they want to be influencers. Like my nephews are like that. They're like, I want to start a YouTube. And I'm like, okay, well, you have to put together a business plan, um, a filming schedule, all of that stuff. And they haven't pulled the trigger on those those next steps. Um, so it's really cool what you're doing. Joe's talking about my... Uh, Jackie Robinson's up here. They're so cool. They are cool. Joe's the one that got me into tennis shoes. Uh, he asked me what my favorite shoe is. It's probably uh, my favorite shoe. I like the old school uh, black and red Jordans. Yeah. Like the, yeah. I just got some of the blazers. I wasn't sure I'd like them, but I got a green and white pair that are they're pretty cool. I'm digging them. They're very comfortable. Yeah, I, li- I like the Jordan ones. Those are my favorite. <laughs> Just say Jordan ones. <laughs> Joe. Jeez. Are you able to see the comments? Yeah, I've got them up on my phone. Oh, back. yeah. She's wa- She's watching it from her phone. Watching, watching myself. <laughs> and my guy on the phone. <laughs> Do you um, have you watched any of these old classic cartoons? Do you have a favorite one? Uh, I've watched the like real Dennis the Menace, not like the cartoon one, but yeah. Um, Original, Smurfs. Original, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Smurfs was a was a grandma's house favorite. Yeah. That was the number one. And then it switched to Tom and Jerry. Then it went to this movie called Private Eyes. That's yeah. a good one. Awesome. What's the best movie you've seen recently? Uh, either Super Mario movie, movies. 
Super Mario Brothers movie. Yeah. Um, that was a really good one. I dug uh, that one. I liked the the Bad Guys movie. Yes. I like that one. That's a good one. one, too. Maverick. Top Gun Maverick. That was cool. Nate did a good job with that at SWAT, huh? Yeah. Like, what was what was something that you really dug about SWAT? Um, the training's really good. It is good, huh? It's a lot. Nate's crazy. How about him ice skating on the stage? Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't fall. Yeah, that was crazy. He told me he was going to ice skate on the stage, but I was just kind of like, okay, whatever that means. And then he put out a ice skating rink. That's nuts. <laughs> I wonder if he played hockey. I don't know. I'll have to ask him. That was a good one. So, yeah, he does a good job. Do you like going to those trainings? I mean, that was my first one. Except for the uh, the one over spring there uh, in North Carolina. Yeah. In, the carrier one? Yeah. Were nice. you at that one? I was not. I was not. That but was you- me. I guess that one was more of symmetry. Yeah, the that was the agency owner academy, uh, and um, Asheville and Casey and them were there. Awesome. What uh, do you like going to those bigger ones? Yeah. Kind of cool. What I'm going to ask you a question now. Uh, how do you, what do you suggest people do to kind of pay attention during those, right? Like, that's like a whole month of school all at one time. Um, try to take notes. Do you write your notes down or do you take it, a computer with you? Uh, pen and paper. You should take a pen and paper because that makes you actually get it into your brain because you have to, like, I mean... If you really want to, you can just take a picture on your computer and, or like on your phone, you can just use the scan text and take a, or take the picture and then copy everything. Yeah. And then you're like, well, I'm done. Yeah. You kind of forget everything. Yeah. You don't really (laughs) use it as a, you don't really use the, um, you don't really use any other things. Yeah. That always makes me laugh when people pull out their phone for a slide, right? It's like 500 people pulling out their phone and taking a picture. And I'm like, are you ever going to look at that picture again? It's one of the reasons why I don't use slides when I present. Because I'm like, I know some people have to see it visually to get it. But um, I usually provide like slides afterwards for that reason. Because I'm like, you're not going to go back and look at that picture. You're going to go back and look at your selfies, right? Um, what challenges has your business presented? Lots of them, right? They all come, businesses, no matter what your business is, it's all going to come with challenges. Um, But for me, I think the biggest challenge I had was getting my mind right. Um, And people be like, oh, I don't need motivation or I'm self-driven but every time I was hitting a different level in my business, I was struggling with my mindset quite a bit. Um, But I have a mentor named uh, Rob Sakel and Bobby Stocks, who they can tell just simply by the way I'm posting on Facebook, if I'm in, if I'm in my own head and my uh, Rob specifically, um, one of the biggest things I struggled with was uh, he would call it stop stopping. Because I would start to get into something, I would start to kind of break through in a different level, um, and then I would stop, right? And I would start second guessing myself. I would start being like, "Well, maybe I don't want to do this. Maybe I don't want to do that." And he would just simply text me, "Stop stopping, get going." Um, and it's so important to have those sort of people in your business. Without those sorts of people, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have. Um, moved as quickly as I've moved. I've only been speaking for, for two years now. This 8% will be two years of me speaking. Um, and sometimes it's hard to to look back and be like, I'm doing a really good job, right? You don't want to sound too arrogant or 
to like, oh, I'm a big deal. But when I look back, I'm like, I am doing a good job. And um, being able to say that out loud and keep my mind right has been one of the biggest struggles I've had. But I keep doing it every day. That's where the a bit too much came in. Um, I've always been told I'm a bit too much. So I was trying to live life like everyone else. Um, and that never really works out, right? Like if you tried to move backwards and just be like a regular kid, not try to learn stuff and not run businesses, it would be harder to move backwards, don't you think? Like if you just tried to be Sawyer, average kid. Yeah, I don't want to be that. <laughs> it would be tough to move backwards. So instead of trying to move backwards when people say, oh, that's crazy. You have your own show. Why don't you just sleep in on Saturdays? Um, it's easier sometimes to just believe in yourself. But it can be hard at the same time. Um, speaking your producer is distracting everyone. <laughs> oh. Um, give them a hard time. Speaking of a bit too much, tell us like about that. So that I accidentally, which was crazy, um, landed a TEDx talk, which is one of the biggest stages in the world. And that's when I reached out to Cody's team and asked if I could speak at 8%. I was like, I should probably practice a speech but it was funny because covid hit um so the the ted talk kept getting pushed out tedx talk kept getting pushed out but once i signed the contract with them i couldn't present that material until the talk happened so i got the um gig at eight percent to go and speak and that's when i started really coaching on the five by five by five method that i have on the social media coaching um but the a bit too much was something that I just wanted to share out into the world that it's okay to be who you are. Um, and people gave me a really hard time, which is even funnier to me. They gave me a hard time. They're like, why would you talk title your TEDx talk that nobody's going to take it serious. And they just, you know, blah, 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 giving me a bunch of negative feedback. Um, but the brand itself, the message itself has really blown up. People are, you know, paying me to come and present that to their their companies, to their workers, to let people know it's okay to be who you are. It's okay to, if somebody says you're too talkative, you're too driven, you're too anything, usually what that means is that's your special thing about you, right? Like some kids might be like, oh, so are you too driven? You should just be a kid. And you're like, no, that's what makes me awesome, right? Like that's what makes me different than everyone else. Um, so that's what I'm coaching on is, is really embracing that thing that people say is too much about you. Like people used to tell me I'm too bossy. I talk too much. Well, now people are paying me six figures a year to be bossy, right? We just call it coaching now. Yeah. That's what okay. makes it cool. <laughs> and one of our last questions, what are you most excited about for the rest of 2023? And a follow-up question what are goals that you want to accomplish? I am super excited to continue to go out and spread the a bit too much message. Um, I thought I was done speaking uh, after 8% here. This, oh, I'm not speaking at 8%, but the event right before 8%, I thought I was done. I've actually booked three more events in August. Um, so the message is getting out there. Um, people are wanting to see it. They're wanting to hear it. So my ultimate goal um, is to to travel around and get paid to to present a bit too much. Um, I'm on the way to doing that. I'm really excited about that. And what was your second question? It's so early. Uh, I guess it was what. So yeah, most excited about for the rest of 2023 and goals. Yep. So my goal is to continue to build my stage brand, if you will um and and present that to more people and then i'm super excited about bringing some people to montana so i'm gonna reach out to you guys about doing an ice fishing slash branding trip and then the end of september i'm gonna do a branding trip where 
I bring 10 people to Montana and we spend the day fishing and talking about branding and, and doing some cool stuff. So I'm excited about that. Thanks for sharing my website. Look at you go. You're welcome. All right. Um, speaking of fishing, <laughs> I have one more thing to say. Speaking All right. of fishing, we are hosting a, uh, a like, a, fun, a fishing tournament fundraiser at one of our local uh, fishing communities that they do a uh, free fishing every Sunday. Um, from That's so 11, cool. From, 11 to, from 12 to 3. And we talked with one of the, like, owners. And um, we got everything set. We're we're getting the specifics. We're getting all of ours. We're getting the flyers made. Uh, we sponsorships, t-shirts, banners. I mean, it's gonna be a lot. Yeah. And like, um, participants, and if we can, can we go try to talk to people about, like, go talk to like Ace and stuff. Yeah, we'll Okay. Well, let's. Uh, a squirrel came out of the tree and told me you wanted to help. Yes, I'm gonna help sponsor that, and then I'm gonna do something else here, Sawyer. Okay, so stay with me. So anybody that donates to Sawyer's, this is all backwards on here. Anybody that donates to Sawyer's uh, oh, fishing deal, gosh. so any oh. amount of money that you donate, whatever you can. Get the uh, get with Alex, his uh, his uh, what producer? Yeah. <laughs> that hand. <laughs> hand. Um, I hear. Any amount of money that you donate, I will do a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with you. Okay, so you donate money to this fishing thing, I will do a two-hour coaching call with you. Um, so we'll get the information once once you donate to Sawyer, Alex can get me your information, and I will go in. Do a two-hour coaching call. So if you give them a hundred bucks, if you give them a thousand bucks, if you come in big, then I'll come in big, um, and we'll we'll work it out. But no minimum amount. Just donate. Get in touch with me, and I will do a free two-hour coaching call with you. And Sandra, uh, first off, thank you. That's amazing. Thank you. And secondly, what um, if it's cool? What we'll do is I'll take this. I'll make a, a reel out of it and some shorts and stuff out of this segment. But um, if anyone donates and takes you up on that offer, what should they be looking to get out of that coaching to better their business? So we will go through and we'll do a quick needs analysis on what you've got going on with your business. Um, are you lacking on social media? Are you needing to build your brand? Uh, we're going to find out what your biggest issue is, and we're going to find out the easiest way to fix it without having to invest a bunch of money. Um, that's my zone of genius. So it might be that your logo is just disconnected and people aren't stopping on it. It might be that you're not quite sure what your message is out into your community. Um, usually what we have is what we call brand confusion, right? So we're trying to be all things to everybody. But if we can figure out what your brand is, what your message is, like you guys have watched me transition from, you know, the five by five by five into the a bit too much, which encompasses everything. So even I'm getting tighter on my brand over and over and over again. And that's what we'll do. So we'll get together. We'll figure out what's your brand message, what assets do you have, and then what free assets. Is it social media? Is it Facebook? Is it TikTok? Is it LinkedIn? Where do we need to be to get your message out and create that omnipresence that we've talked about? Um, Joe Campert is, the, uh, is an expert at creating omnipresence, right? Every time you turn around, there's that dude. And that's what I'll show you how to do in that coaching call. Sweet. Dude, that's awesome. Thank you so much for that and for uh, taking your time this morning. And uh, Sawyer has a really cool way to shut down the show. So we'll let you get All back right. to your Saturday, your family, and tell them thank you for taking, letting you take your time today. No, they're all still sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> okay, have her do it with you. All right. And go next to the camera, next to the camera, and you're gonna say SMC out. All right, SMC out. 
Boom. You ready? Three, two, one. SMC out. SMC out. Oh, here's, here's. <laughs>